Yo, 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 welcome back to Monday with Molly. So as per usual, if these videos are helping you, go ahead and subscribe, share. I'm going to put some additional resources below as I have in the past, I think, three videos. So feel free to check those out, learn, etc. So normally when I record these videos, the Monday with Molly's, I usually do them in batches. So anywhere between four to eight videos. And then the Flip Your 20 Fridays are usually at some point that week based on something that's come up or what's in my mind or questions I get. But with everything going on, first with COVID, I had recorded a bunch before COVID. You know, so I put uh, recorded before COVID, still relevant today. And then I decided not to make a bunch in advance. And then everything going on the past few weeks with the uh, racial justice movement is I was like, I should not be pre-recording any of these because I wanted to make it timely. So this morning I was running with a friend and we were having a chat about everything going on. And just as we got talking, it got me thinking about um, what I wanted today's video to be about. So today's video is about find and use your voice. Find and use your voice. There's a lot of voices out there. Some for good, some not for good, some just to argue, some to enlighten. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it's about finding and using your voice. So right now, there are so many ways to be an ally, or as I mentioned in the past video, an accomplice, which is like the next level up of showing up um, in solidarity and equity and justice. And there's so many ways to, you know, what ally, uh, accomplice, to be anti-racist, verse. The easier part, or how we might word it, is verse, just be kind, or just don't be racist. All right, so there's, there's, there's a difference. There's a difference between saying, and I mentioned this in another video, my mom taught me not to be racist. There, that's different than being anti-racist and being an advocate and, and taking the action to not be racist and to educate and advocate for each other to not be racist all, or to be anti-racist also. So this is you find about you finding your voice and whatever works best for where you are right now. So I'll give you some examples. So what I'm doing, um, again, this is on a spectrum of being in, of not being racist to being anti-racist. Again, there's a spectrum of it all. So I, I'm learning and, and growing as well. Um, so some things I'm doing for me, this is for me, you got to do what's best for you. And I'll share some examples after is, so one of the things I do is, and I have been doing and doing even more of lately is, is just learning whether it's audiobooks. again, the, the book, um, white fragility by Robin D'Angelo, I'll put it below again. Amazing. She has plenty of interviews on YouTube also. So if you feel you're getting defensive, she's a good one to listen to. Uh, but just listen to audiobooks. Um, How to Be Anti-Racist is the next on my list. Again, a ton of documentaries, listening to podcasts, listening to uh, different black researchers, authors, people, people of color to learn. Like, just going to shut up and learn. And so that's one of the things I do. And then I like to share that on these videos and with people I'm talking to to say, hey, here's something I learned or, or whatever the case might be. So that's one way. The other thing I'm doing is um, I know when COVID hit, it was all about, you know, supporting small businesses. And now on social media, wherever you live, there's supporting small black owned businesses. And I'm not, I don't really go out to eat very often. So just going to restaurants and supporting in that way is not really my thing. But I have been looking for a new bakery because mine has been closed. So I found this great uh, uh, bakery owned by this uh, black woman who is awesome. She's so sweet. And young, young gal did... Uh, it's amazing, like training at a culinary institute, worked with Emeril Lagasse, and then she loved cooking. She's a chef, and then she's like, and then I'm, she goes, then I made a cake for my mom, and I kind of fell in love. So she does, her shop is like sweets, but then she also has catering. So I went there and uh, bought some cupcakes, went back the next week, bought some other things. It's delicious. So that's, that's a simple way that once a week, maybe a couple times a month, I will go there, right? So simple. Um, 
I also am owning and acknowledging my implicit biases I have, which I've put in a couple of previous videos, the Harvard Implicit Bias Study. It just gives you an idea of, again, with how you were raised. It's easy to go, I'm not racist, but look at how you were raised, take the study and you'll see some things pop out which are not comfortable when you think, oh, I'm so enlightened. And then you're like, oh, I do think that sometimes. So I'm owning that and I'm going to keep evolving and making sure that I'm not acting on those implicit biases that we all have, literally every person, against people who are different than us. And the difference could be, it's obviously race, religion, um, sexuality, um, socioeconomic, there's a ton of different ways that we're different. So it's just owning it. It's just, you got to be aware before you can change. So that's one thing I'm doing. I'm also having conversations with friends um, about everything going on and saying, oh, that's not the right language. Or someone could say, oh, that's, that's, that uh, didn't sound too good coming out of your mouth. And I'd be like, ooh, I meant to say this, or thanks for checking me. So the, those are things that, that I'm choosing to do. I would encourage everybody <laughs> to vote. Again, however you want to vote, but if you're 18, please register and vote. Find out what the voting rules are in your county. Um, a One way we can have a voice is to vote, even though I know a lot of times we think we don't, especially at the local level, um, your voice and your vote do matter. So that's one thing I do also. Now some things that I... Uh, that there are other things to do too, like um, like I said, going to the restaurants, whether it's locally owned in general to help your community or black owned restaurants. Again, I'm not a foodie, so that's not my main way of helping, but if that's your thing, that's another way. Obviously, donating money, donating time. Do, do the research on, on where you're donating. Um, is it making phone calls? Is it, is it marching? Is it, again, a cash donation to make sure 100% or most of that profit goes to that organization? You know, you got to do the research, but you can help that way. Certainly the protests, the marches. Uh, for the students on here, I mean, you can do a bunch of those things too, but for the students specifically, before school gets back into session, because I'm knocking on wood, schools have some work to do. A lot of work in the school system. But you as a student, you can take the lead, whether it's student council, if it's your team, if it's just some friends, if it's whomever it is, maybe now you start to do, like maybe you start to do some sort of forum or peer education, whether it's on social media, it's in a park, it's, and to have conversations. Have on, this is, this is an uncomfortable time, so have the uncomfortable conversations, but learn, learn unlearn and learn but students you can do that you can do that now not to prove a point but to question what are we learning what are my beliefs what do I need to know what am, how can I help better even a lot of the talk show hosts they're doing their shows going what do I need to do better which can sometimes sound like duh don't you know but if someone's asking the question no maybe they don't know so just be open and willing to help another thing I think students can do Again, I travel all over the U.S. and Canada, so I see, I see things from a, I guess a, I'm grateful for the perspective of seeing how things are in different states, different areas. Um, for me personally, I'm, I'm always like, yeah, but kids are kids, whether it's in some, a rural um, red state, if it's the suburbs in uh, a blue state or blue city. There are plenty of different things going on. At the core of it, kids are kids. So I love that my message can be reached and received no matter where. But particularly now, what a great time for students of any age to, I'm sure you are at this point, aware of how your family thinks, whatever their beliefs are, whatever they are. And if you feel different, again, whatever your feelings are different, depending on where they're starting from, this is a good time to question and to start to evolve into what your beliefs are. They might be very similar to your parents. They might go, well, I, I see some of it, but I don't agree with this. Or like, oh my gosh, you believe what? And you feel different. You're at a point where you're allowed to have and start to, as a, especially once you hit like middle school, teenage years, to start to create your own belief system and opinion. It, again, it might, it might be what theirs is. It might not be. You might not be able to have a voice in the house if yours is different. I don't know. 
But what I do know is you can do your own research because you all have a phone and you can do whatever research you want to learn whatever you need to learn. And if saying things at home that are different than your family is not the best or safest place to do it because it'll turn into a big blowout fight, nothing will change, then see who you can have those conversations with. Is it an extended family member? Again, is it classmates? When you get back to school, knock on wood, I hope schools are going to have these discussions. So you get to start to cultivate that. Again, I grew up with very racist grandparents, and I had a mom who taught us not to be racist. Not anti-racist. I didn't even know that was a term until a few weeks ago. So I grew up with very different messages, and then at some point I did evolve into my own. So the same is true for you. I hope this helps you. Again, there's so many ideas. These are just a few of some things I do, some things you can do. We could list a whole bunch. But the point is, it's, it's you finding your voice and you being an ally or an accomplice or an advocate and an anti-racist in a way that works for you that you can do and do with confidence and do with energy and gusto because that's what we need right now. People of all ages are doing, doing the work. So I hope you're able to find your voice. Reach out anytime. You can always DM me on Instagram at flipyour20. I respond to every direct message that I get. So I hope this helps you. I will see you in a few days at the end of the week with Flip Your 20 Friday. Take care. Peace.